Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever and whenever you may be listening to this broadcast. I'm Mark Holliday. Welcome to your encouraging word for today. Before we get started, you know what I want you to do? Like, subscribe, share this video, talk about this video, practice this video, everything I remind you to do before we get started here. Listen, I'm continuing in this prayer series here because I believe prayer is such an intricate part of, your, of our lives. I want to share something with you before we get started here. Uh, I, I asked myself the other day, uh, why do I find myself, I can't go a broadcast, I believe, without talking about prayer and the word of God. Because when I gave my life to Christ, that was the foundation that was laid. I was taught if you learn how to pray, and if you study to show yourself approved, meaning give time to the study of the word of God, your entire life will change. You will be led and guided and directed uh, in the things of God. Your manhood will bless. Your finances will be blessed. Your health will be blessed. These things don't come without challenge because it's a walk of faith. It's what's right behind me right here. Fight the good fight of faith. And so the reason why I emphasize prayer and the word of God so much, your whole life is built on this premise here. After you get saved, you develop your prayer life. You talk to God and God will talk back to you, whether it be a rhema word spoken to you. But primarily, I want you to learn how to learn how to hear God through reading the word of God. And in doing so, you will find your intimacy with God begins to increase and increase in things will begin to change. You become a strong believer. You become a force to be reckoned with. And then I went into the word of God and I began to saw other believers, the generals in the faith, whether it's Moses or David or Joshua, Peter, Paul, and most importantly, our savior, Jesus Christ, these men had prayer lives. And then when I saw how effective they were in prayer, it behooved me. I need to develop a prayer life. See, the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. And that's why when I, when they say pray without ceasing, meaning you should have a continual prayer life, a daily activity where you talk with God. And then on one of the other broadcasts, we talked about the spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer is when you stay in the mindset of prayer, meaning you can go throughout your entire day, but in your spirit, you're mindful of God. You're listening for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Not that you're walking around spooky and you can't get involved with anything, but your spirit man becomes so sensitive that you can just actually feel the presence of God. So that being said, I want to uh, jump into this word today with you. I want to talk about your promotion is in prayer. Your promotion is in prayer. And we're going to start off in first Samuel, the 30th chapter. And I'm still, I'm encouraging my men. I'm challenging my men. Do 30 days of prayer. Start off with five minutes a day. If you haven't developed the prayer life, I challenge you five minutes a day for 30 days straight. Watch it become a habit and then you begin to grow from there. Because the more time you spend with an individual, the more instruction you can get from them, the better you begin to know them. And when I say instruction, I'm talking about with God. Just like Adam and Eve met with God in the cool of the day, they got instructions from God. Let me say this before I go into the message. Did you notice there were no Harvard, Yale, Princeton, M? MIT in the Garden of Eden. So how did Adam and Eve learn how to plant gardens? They learned sowing and reaping. And then their ancestors began to build ironworks and they began to build many things. How did they get this? They got it from uh, fellowshipping with God. God showed them how to do all of these things. And then from there on, I believe institutions and schools were built because God downloaded knowledge to them. When you walk with God, I'm not negating college. I'm not negating study, but there are certain things and attributes in your life. You can only learn by being in the presence of God, by reading the word of God. So that being said, let's go to first Samuel, the 30th chapter. And I want to start off talking about that. This is when, again, David was being chased by David. And I mean, I'm sorry, David was being chased by Saul and Saul and David had been on the road for some time. Then he came back to his hometown. When he got there, he found something tragic had happened. How many of you all been out doing the work of the Lord? You've been minding your own business. You've been trying to lose weight, get your finances together. And then something breaks out in another part of your life. Well, that's what we've been going on with David. 
David had been running for quite some time. He decided to go back home because he had not seen his family. And this is what happened here. Look what it says here in the first verse of the 30th chapter. It says three days later, when David and his men arrived home to their city of Ziklag, they found that the Amalekites had raided the city and burned it to the ground, carrying off all the women and children. And David and his men looked at the ruins and realized what happened to their families. They wept until they could weep no more. David, two wives, Anna Harm and Abigail were among those who had been captured. David was seriously worried. Why? For the bitter grief for their children and his men began talk of killing him. But David took strength from the Lord. Look what it said in verse seven. But he said to Abathar, the priest, bring me the ephod. And I'll explain that in a second. So Abathar brought it and David asked the Lord. This is the part I wanted to show you. Your promotion is in prayer. Verse eight, David asked the Lord, shall I chase them? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will recover everything that was taken from you. Come on, let's pray right there. Father in heaven, we thank you right now as we go into this lesson. Let the spirit of prayer rest on everyone that's listening to me. I pray right now recovery. I pray restoration over people that's listening. I pray right now they will get instruction from you for their life, that they may have recovery in Jesus name. Amen. All right. You know, again, this story is self-explanatory. David had came back off the war. He, he had been fighting and he got to his hometown and he found out everything had been taken from him. You know, I've experienced some things in my life and I believe the enemy had stolen something from me. And, and I felt within myself, just like David, God, I've been out doing what you said to do. I've been out uh, witnessing. I've been out reading. The, I've been reading the word. I've been out sharing the gospel. I've been lending a helping hand and this happens to me. You know, if there comes a time in life, you got to realize that some things happen to you to strengthen you. I'm not saying all the tragedies and, and things that happen in your life is from God, but sometimes you can allow a trial to build you. you it, it could challenge your character. It can make you stronger. And this is exactly what happened to David. There's a few things that happen in this scripture here. Notice it says he came back home and he found out the enemy just didn't kill his family. He carried them off. In other words, David probably is wondering in his mind, are they doing something ungodly to my wives, to my children? Where could they be? Are they on the other side of the country? Many things can run through your mind. Just imagine, God forbid, somebody in your family kidnapped and they left a note saying, we didn't kill your family. We have them with us. And so that can play on your mind. And then not just top that off, David men talked about killing him. Remember, David had at least three men with him. One killed 800, one killed 400, and another was accustomed to wrestling lions. So these men said, listen, David, we've been following you. We've been out preaching with you. We've been out deaconing for you. We've been out uh, running around with you. And now we come back and everything we had is gone. Have you ever been involved in something and people blamed you even though they volunteered? volunteer to help you. People volunteered to be with you and now they're blaming you for their demise. That's what's happening to David. So out of all of these things that's happened, I noticed David did one thing out of everything that was mentioned. First of all, the Bible says David began to encourage himself in the Lord, his God. That's what the King James version said. But in the new living translation, what we're reading out of, it says David took strength from the Lord. He didn't take strength from his men. He didn't take strength, couldn't take strength from his wife. She had been kidnapped out of everything that was around him. David knew where his strength came from. And no matter what's going on around you, you got to get yourself to the point. Where do you draw your strength from? Because if everything around you is collapsing, the economy is a collapsing. Your favorite politician just got indicted. The job just laid you off. The neighborhood that you in, it's not where you want to be. You might have got a bad report from the doctor. If you look around yourself in the natural, it can be discouraging. But you got to be like David. Take a note out of the book of David. You know, the Bible says these things was written before time that we through patience and comfort of the scripture that we might have hope. 
David found strength in God. When you go through a trial or test, you got to find strength in God. Well, somebody said, well, I don't believe in prayer. You know, some of the most heathenest nations believe in prayer. Read through the Bible outside of Israel and notice there was ungodly nations believed in praying to their gods. There was uh, there are ungodly nations today that believe in statues and, and voodoo. They believe in some type of small G God. Why not believe in your big G God? And so we see here, David took strength from the Lord. He didn't take strength from his money. He didn't take strength from his health. Thank God for all those things. But David encouraged himself, King James Version, in the Lord his God. Second step, let me just parenthetically insert this. Do you know you can't pray correctly until you are encouraged? Look, look what it says here in verse six. It says David took strength in the Lord. Verse seven says, then he went to Abathar, the priest and said, bring me the ephod. I'm going to try to put that picture on the screen. I got an old picture somewhere, but the priest during David's day, they wore something called an ephod. It was like a vest and it had different rubies in it or different gems all symbolized the tribes of Israel. So when the priest went into the presence of God, those stones were symbolic of bringing them into the presence of God. And when the priest needed to a an answer, those gems, those, 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 uh, those, uh, 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 rubies or rocks or whatever they were, they will begin to emanate or change colors from what, from what I'm told. And they will get an answer from God. But watch this now. Notice this. When David put on that ephod, there was only for the priest. He got in prayer. David knew in order to get the things back that he lost, he had to go get in prayer. He had to seek God. And I want to encourage you. Your promotion, I'm not just saying all you have to do is pray, but David prayed. He first encouraged himself in God. Then he got in prayer and then he looked for direction from God. What do you have to do? First of all, you got to get off your soapbox. You got to get out your, your pity box, stop, uh, your uh, uh, pity party box. Stop being a victim. Stop blaming your woes on everyone that's yes, someone might have did something to you, but are they going to help you? This is the main thing we got to get our mindset to is nothing's going to change in your life until you change. Stop looking to the government. Stop looking to every other uh, entity. First, look to God and God may use different avenues. He may use different entities to bless you, but your hope have to be in God. So in verse seven, it says, then David asked for Abathar, bring me the ephod. And look at verse eight. David went in prayer. David asked the Lord. That's prayer. And this is what he asked. Shall I chase after them? Will I catch them? Notice how simple David prayed. David didn't make this thing long. He wasn't humming and hawing. He, he wasn't uh, tarrying all night on the altar. He didn't go on a 21 day fast. No, he, he didn't have time for all that. And let me say this. When you have a prayer life, you can just tap right into that vein with God. If any of you all know what I mean, David just simply asked the Lord, shall I chase them? God, God, listen, is it even worth it? They could be dead and gone. But my point is this, David promotion came because he prayed. Just imagine if he didn't pray, his wife, his children, his loved ones, his finances, his health, whatever he was believing God for, it had been sitting right there in the camp of the enemy. But look at the latter part of verse eight. It says, and the Lord told him, this is instructions coming out of prayer. Yes, go after them. You will recover everything that was taken from you. David right there knew everything was going to be all right. Why? The Lord gave him a promise. And when you begin to read the word of God and rightly divide it, you will begin to see there are certain promises in the word of God that God promised he will do for you. As you go in and rightly divide it, there are things belong to you. Ephesians 1 and 3 said, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us past tense with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Hebrews 8 and 6 says we have a better covenant built upon better promises. In other words, if you go back and read the Old Testament, there were certain things God promised him. You read Deuteronomy 28. 
God said, I will make you the head and not the tail. You'll be above and not beneath. You will be the lender and not the bar. Those were the physical blessings of Israel. And here God turned around and blessed us with salvation. And then he said, this is a better covenant than that built upon better promises. See the old Testament focus on the physical things God could have given you. The new Testament focuses on the spiritual riches without negating the physical. And so what I'm saying is this, when you begin to get in prayer, when tragedy strikes, when things come your way, things you don't understand, as you begin to get in prayer and begin to seek God, and once God through the, through the word of God or through a rhema word, God will give you direction and it's as good as done. Once you get a word from God, it's as good as done. Last point I want to make, do you remember when the man, I believe it was a centurion soldier came to Jesus and said, listen, I don't need you to come to my house, Jesus, just say in a word and my servant shall be healed. David got a word from God and he knew he would get everything back. Go in through the word of God, the Bible and get a word and watch your promotion come out of that word. Watch your promotion come out of prayer. All right. I'm going to stop right there. I'm Mark Holiday. That's your encouraging word for today.